Yo, what it do guys? Leon Muki here, and I'm back with another chapter of The Radiant Hero of Light and Darkness. This is chapter 8, The End of an Era. So, with that said, let's get into this, shall we guys? As Izuku and the party members now begin looking at each and every location. Since there are three locations, they have to head to, they have to, head to each one pretty quickly. And take care of them before things get, well, crazy and hectic. They first start with that of the underground trade route. With taking care, with saving and taking care of many guards that are in charge of the underground. Taking them out, allowing the liberators to break out many of the slaves that were hunting their way to the underground slave market. With that, one location was taken care of pretty quickly. However, the next two locations would end up being the toughest. Next up being that of the Duchess Plantation. As heading there, Sophia soon explains that the plantation has quite of, well, horrible memories for her. As she tells the party that she was born at that plantation. Both her parents were demonic humans in the empire, struck by poverty. But... And her father was he was set with massive debts. Because of that, they were forced into slavery. The plantation was where they were sent at to be trained. But given that her mother was she her mother was already pregnant with her, she was born in the plantation itself. But do it but also but her mother was sold off and her father was killed for insubordination not wanting to leave without his wife. Because of this, Sophia was raised by the Duchess, but not like a daughter, but as that of a weapon to her guardian, basically. Knowing, finding, many years later, finding out the truth about her parents, she decided to want vengeance against the, against the very woman who took her family away from her. But instead, she had to run away and flee due to the Inquisitor ha was already there ready to kill her, but not the current Inquisitor, an old one. It was hard for her before she found a group of people willing to help her out and save her life. Due to this, she spent her life trying to put an end to the Empire's slavery. And, now, and with the help of the Crown Prince, they're now being able to do such a thing. Now that the party knows Sophia's, well, reasoning on why she wants to change the empire, she can't, they feel more motivated and more driven to put an end to help her make her dream a reality. As they head to the plantation where tons of Liberator members are actually posing as that of slaves, mostly demonic humans and beastly humans, with giving them certain areas to to tag, bump, to tag and put that of explosive magic sigils. When after that, they soon really, they soon cause tons of diversion explosions, allowing the liberators to invade the plantation pretty easily. Before, Iz before Izuku and his party had to take down the Duchess and put an end to everything. As they head into the massive mansion plantation, fighting against guards and taking them down bit by bit, with they finally reach the Duchess main room, as they see as they see her with Sophia getting pissed, having that of angry looks in her eyes, with soon the Duchess saying, ah, uh, "Sophia, it's so good to see you." My dear daughter, it's, I knew that you would return with Finn, she cracking her whip 
with saying, I'm only here to put an end to everything. And, I, and I'm also here to kill you. But then Izuku's eyes began whining with Soon saying, Sophia, you can't! With saying, stay out of this Midori. This is my call. With then Izuku getting somewhat terrified. With then Volio saying, don't, don't get in her way, Izuku. Sometimes you need vengeance to end it. If you, if you let her just leave, leave be like this, there's a chance that it's just going to cause more pain for her. With, saying, with then the judge is saying, I gave you everything. I treated you more than just one of those puppets and slaves out there. Then those things, you should be grateful. Say, grateful? Grateful? You took me away from my mother and then killed my father. How should I be grateful? That I'm grateful that I don't know what they look like? That I'm grateful that I have never heard their voices, not even once? Sure, I am grateful. Grateful enough to have the power that I need to put an end to your twisted life. As then she prepares a, a magic art with then multiple fireballs began to circle around her before becoming one as she screams magical art Inferno Cannon with then soon a dagger a dagger soon nullifies the the art as it was coming for the Duchess as soon a shadow soon appears as it being the Inquisitor with Isaac saying you you're that boy with then he the boy, the boy Inquisitor grabs the Duchess and then they disappear with soon Sophia couldn't help but get pissed saying, damn it, damn it. With Izuku saying, Sophia, I, it's whatever. I'll get my chance again next time. Let's just go. With soon they leave with a lot, not only that, the Liberators soon burned down the entire plantation from all of the, of the shabby homes to the, to the massive mansion itself to even everything that was twisted about the place. With Izuku looking back, feeling like, are we doing the right thing? Even though it is. Next up, the last place would be the most difficult one. That being the birdcage. One of the three fortresses keeping the Empire safe from the Demon Lord. As the other two being that of the Blade Fort and the Eternal Keep. The Blade Fort is mostly used as that of an offensive, well, fortress against the demonic humans and Demon Lord. As for the Eternal Keep, well, it's mostly used as that of a naval as a naval fleet against any against any attacks from the seas or the or the ocean. Next up, they take they tr this one would be pretty tricky as they have to sneak into the fortress itself. Doing so will cause a lot of commotion and they can't get caught even once as they be as they have to split up the team. The team would, the, the infiltration team would be composed of Izuku, Ymir, and Edward, as Dorgan, Sophia, and Volio would, would be part of the attack, of the, the attack squad. After Izuku and the others basically give them the opening that the liberators need to, to attack, that's when they will all convene with each other once again. It ends up becoming one of the most stressful stealth missions ever, which none of them have been ever prepared for, not even once. But due to this, they were able to pull it off, surprisingly. With them now activating the main gates, with some of the soldiers noticing them, not getting this, they now get the chance to fight back against all of the soldiers and guards inside. While also, while also re rejoining with the others, the team also heads down to free all of the slaves that were captured and sending them to the Devil Town. With that, 
they're now able to take on the guard, take on the person that's in charge of the fortress. This man being that of a known and powerful general who's in charge of the Black Squad. A quite built muscular man with that of silver gray hair as it's spiked up a little bit, but in somewhat of a form of a mohawk, of a small mohawk, with him having tons of scars across his face. With then he preparing to attack our heroes with the battle being that of fierce and strong, as he's saying that he has a duty to uphold the empire, its traditions and everything, as he, as he believes that every living being on this planet is property of the empire of Vulcus. Hearing this, it sickens Izuku, but more fo foremost, it sickens Volio with the two as they as the two as the student and teacher use that of a link art with that they be, they take him down bit by bit as volio was the one who killed the self-centered delusional general with izuku was really taken back with izuku seeing his sensei his teacher kill someone right in front of him with then Volio saying, Izuku, there's, there's gonna be a common time in your life when you're going to need to kill somebody as well. Remember that. Remember these words well. If you want to protect people, sometimes death is necessary to save others. After this, Izu Volio leaves with Ymir wanting to comfort Izuku as she trying her best to do so. With Sophia trying to do the same, but in her own way, as she tells him that sometimes kill, if you get, more people will die if you leave twisted scumbags like the Duchess and the General alive in times like this. Just if you want to be the true hero, and all, and all those who cause suffering as well. Even if it gets your hands dirty. With that, she soon, she hugs Izuku before heading off as well. With Izuku clenching the fist, clenching his fist as he still holds his spear in his right hand. Soon after, the arm, the Imperial Army begins to, well, show up actually. With this, Sophia uses her teleportation magic back to Devil Town, giving them the, the, the mystique they need. With that, Marshall soon congratulates the team for their efforts on saving tons of people's lives. With that, he he's grateful for all their help. With tomorrow, they plan on putting a true end to the Empire once and for all, as their ultimate plan has finally been set up to take down the Empire's slave market once and for all by putting an end to the Emperor and his supporters as well. Being that tom tomorrow night, they plan on having that of a gladiator battle between the two most powerful slaves being the Inquisitor and the Prime Minister's, well, war slave. With that, it would be their perfect chance to put an end to everything that the Empire stands for in one night. However, they won't be able to do that if a rebel army just shows up out of nowhere and they want to keep the collateral damage and, lie, and innocent lives at, well, a minimum given that there will be more slaves in the underground slave market than there will be anywhere else, than anywhere else in the empire. With this, it would be the perfect chance to strike. With that, Marshall also tells everybody to get some rest for tomorrow night. As for Izuku, he has a hard time trying to get some rest at all after everything that has happened especially seeing both Sophia and Volio. Sophia being that of a person truly angry and twisted to kill, as he's only known her for a little while though, 
he can't help but see her truly angry. As for Volio, Izuku cannot still take over the fact that his master has killed somebody like it was nothing. As Izuku ponders this, you soon hear somebody coming to face him, as it being Marcus. Marcus didn't want to, didn't want to startle him, as he asked if he could join him for to look at the stars tonight. With that, the two just sit. With Izuku asking, why is he really doing this? It isn't for just to help innocent people to change the empire for the good, greater good, or to save the world, or what's his true legitimate reason. Within, Marshall couldn't help but smile, saying, you can see right through me. Within, Izuku making a comment saying, not really. I just realized that there are a lot of material motives behind trying to do the right thing after all, especially now being a leader, as he says this that of a small grin. Within, Marshall saying, fair enough. As he tells them that the reason he's doing all this is because of vengeance as well, that he wants to avenge the life of somebody he loved, somebody he cherished that was taken away from him because of the slave system. With that, Izuku was really taken back by this. With then Izuku asking who's his person as it being his first true love as he, she didn't have a name. So Marshall gave her one when they were still together. Her name was Nina and she was a demonic human. With Izuku really caught off guard that the crown prince fell in love with a demonic human. With then Marshall saying, that's the reason why I want to put an end to the system. To make sure that somebody like Nina doesn't suffer like she did. So that's the reason why I'm doing all this. You could say it's selfish for doing this for vengeance. But I think everybody has a right to live how they see fit. Everyone deserves freedom. True freedom. But that Izuku can help say, I agree. And I'm also gonna say, I refuse to kill as well. I'm going to save the Inquisitor. I'm going to save him once and that and for all. That Izuku and Marshall made a promise that they will put an end to everything tonight. Couple hours later and the party is ready to go with them heading to the underground slave market as it being hidden as they head to the entertainment district where one of the liberators is waiting for our party, helping them guide them to the underground slave market and pretending to be that of a slave buyer with the, at the, lip, with the agent actually being the daughter of the prime minister, her name being Alexandra with her despising the slave system as well and realizing that the slave system was more made for the for those in in higher positions to gain money more from instead of any of the other the common people due to this she wanted to put an end to this just like the prince as they with this Alexandra soon gives the party on locations on where to allow those to allow the liberators foot soldiers to attack this to attack the underground slave market and also that they'll that they have nothing to worry about that the prince and their most elite soldiers will be at the cult will be at the underground coliseum to take on to make sure that they'll be ready to overthrow both the emperor and the prime minister once and for all so they have nothing to worry about there but they want to make sure that they can get all the other innocent people out of the situation. With that, everyone nods and ready for this, ready to take him down. As Izuku and the party soon enter the underground slave market, they see so many things, so many disgusting, 
twisted and selfish things. So from that of use, that of buy of options, and even that of, well, brothels as well, which that really sickens each and every one of them with it angering Sophia and Dorian alongside Volio. As for Izuku, he couldn't help but feel so much rage and anger towards the Empire, towards the truth of this world and how everybody is treated. As it, it reminds him that back in his world, people aren't born equal either, but at least we have rights of freedom. At least we can choose on what we want to do, what we want to make. These people, they have no choice whatsoever. And it pisses him off even more than anything. With that, Izuku and the others finally made it to the locations on where to allow the, allow the foot soldiers to storm into. They did take care of a couple of guards from time to time that did spot them, but they were to make sure to be pretty, well, stealthful, to be honest. But then, now, it's time to head to the Coliseum to begin everything. As the party is now 100% ready, little you guys know, everybody now has that of drive arts besides just Izuku and plus ultra arts as well. With that, they're now 100% ready to take, to take everything down once and for all. With them entering the Coliseum, as the battle has already begun with then, so as the Inquisitor is trying his best to take on the Prime Minister's war slave, as he's basically a massive gladiator dude with, with a shield and, and, a ma and a massive broadsword, with he about to strike down the Inquisitor, with Izuku wanting to save the boy, however, the Inquisitor soon turned into shadows before basically coming behind the war, the war slave and then stabbing him square in the back of the throat with blood spatting everywhere with soon. However, other than Izuku, the Inquisitor saying, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. For a split second, Izuku heard, heard the Inquisitor apologize to the slave that he just killed with all the nobles all cheering for the Inquisitor's win with Inquisitor's blade hands still shaking with that of fear and sadness within the Emperor saying ha 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 it looks like I win again Prime Minister with saying of course of course but I will promise you one day I will purchase and train a slave so strong enough to the point that not even an Imperial Inquisitor could defeat him. With then the Emperor saying, ah, I wish to see that, but it will be centuries before something like that could happen. With then Izuku screams out, enough! With everybody hearing the Greenette boy with Izuku preparing his spear in his hands, with all, everyone else having their weapons out as well, with then the Emperor saying, the damn hero, ah, you, you're the reason, you're the reason behind all these attacks on my Emperor, how dare you attack me? With Izuku saying, how dare I, how dare you? You basically used an innocent boy as a nothing but your tool. You basically forced him to kill. For what? All because you hate you hate certain people that cause harm to you? How could you do this to just an innocent kid? With then the Emperor saying, <laughs> I wouldn't expect somebody like you would understand. An immature child trying to play hero. You're nothing but a fool. And not only that, I, we I have no need for heroes in this world. All we need is people who are who are subedient puppets who can be used to be who can be used to kill no matter what. That being slaves, mindless soldiers, 
tools of war. Plus, slaves are useful for anything and all that's necessary. And not only that, it saves the empire money on resources, especially for somebody like me. But then Sophia saying, you sick, twisted bastard. All you're doing is causing more pain than, ha- than good for your empire. The, even the common people are suffering more than anything. You're no ruler or no emperor. All you are is basically a, pr- a penny-pinching merchant playing emperor. With then the emperor saying, how dare you, you insolent, disgusting, demonic human. I'll make you eat those words. Guards, kill her! With then multiple Imperial Guards began to aim their crossbows at Izuku and his party, especially at Sophia. With then a couple other guards actually stab all the other stab the ones who are about to shoot at Izuku and the others with their swords. With everybody's surprise, except Izuku and the party. With then, then Marshall soon stands up saying, Father, it's time to put an end to all of this. An end to your rule. With then, as soon, the Emperor looks at Marshall. What if you, as he points a rapier at the Emperor saying, I challenge you. To the right of the throne, right here and now, saying, you insolent little brat, you dare turn your back on me, your father, your flesh and blood. You turned your back on the people and turned your back and and cared more about yourself. No wonder my mother abandoned the throne and and to get away from you. You're nothing but a selfish man who cares more about himself. Within the premise saying, uh, your, your highness, please calm yourself. His majesty has always, and you're no different. You only care more about yourself and your self meta title. You only, you treat slaves as nothing but that of, tra- is that of animals you can breed and use as weapons. You are a sick, a heartless and selfish man. Alexandra will end you soon as well. But soon saying, my daughter, what are you? Within a sword, a a cling of a sword was stuck into the ground as it being that of Alexandra wearing a suit of armor saying, father, I don't think we, you're not going to be going anywhere until this battle is taken care of. But soon the emperor soon saying, enough of this. Inquisitor! I order you, as the Emperor of Vulcus, I order you to kill the hero's party and then kill my wretched son. After hearing this, the Inquisitor soon hesitates, saying, I, 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 saying, you don't have to kill. With within him hearing Izuki's voice saying, I can tell you're a kind hearted person. You don't want to kill. When we first met, you were aiming square for me. I can tell that you wanted to end this over as soon as possible. You didn't want to kill the others. That why? I could tell that you wanted to avoid attacking them as soon as possible. Not only that, when we fought against the Duchess, you protect you protected her instead of trying to come after killing us. Instead, and you ran away. And not only that, now, when you fought against that gladiator, you, you apologized. You hated the fact that you had it to kill. Is that true? Don't you see? You don't have to be a tool. You don't have to be a weapon. With then, the, the Inquisitor couldn't help but cry, saying, I don't, I don't want to be a weapon anymore. I don't want to kill anymore. With soon, the Emperor saying, you damn brat. With soon, the Prime Minister saying, I believe it's time to send his replacements. As he soon snaps his fingers, 
as two other figures appeared as a being a one, one little boy and one little girl wearing mats of shinobi guards as they both look alike except their hairs. The boys being that of short hair as the girls has that of a sm has one solitary back ponytail with they both being dark elves. But then Edward soon saying, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Don't tell me that they would soon. Dorgan saying, it seems like it. Those must be the next Inquisitor candidates. It seems like their control over their current one was starting to wane. With then the Empress saying, <laughs> well, even when they start being insubordinate, we have a certain, well, phrase that will actually make them do what they're told. With soon, he's like saying, what are you? Inquisitors, activate Slaughter Drive. After saying this, both the current Inquisitor and the twin candidate Inquisitors begin to scream in pain and agony as red-like aura begins to surround them as their eyes begin to turn red as well. After seeing this, Izuku's saying, they have drive arts, but this looks different from ours. With Dorgan soon saying, that's because the slaughter drive is basically a, a drive forced on people. Once, once it's activated by the controller, the, the user will not stop until the controller's target is either dead or if the, per or if the host of the, dr the drive as well is dead. With soon, Ymir saying, this is awful. Why? With then he's saying, there has to be another way. I don't. With soon, Volio saying, there is one way. The slaughter drive is, is more tied to a person's magical power than it is tied to a person's stamina. If we can drop their magical levels down, all the way down to the point of near exhaustion, we'll be able to get by pretty quickly without killing them. That's what you want to do, right, Izuku? You want to save these brats. With Izuku saying, yeah, I do. Because that's the kind of hero I am. That's the kind of hero I'll always be. I'll always be the hero that ha will save anybody with a smile on my face. As then he's spinning his spear around, as now he's preparing for battle, as the others prepare for battle as well. Within the Inquisitors heading straight for Izuku and his team, this battle begins turning into almost that of a bloodshed with the others trying their best not to deal, not to deal lethal and powerful blows to the, to the Inquisitor kids. With the two, as for the two little, as for the two little ones, Dorgan and Volio are taking care of the boy and, Dor and Dorgan and Edward are taking care of the, taking care of the girl. As for Izuku and Ymir, they're taking on that of the, of the of the of the main inquisitor with Volio and Sophia they try multiple strikes and attacks with with Sophia using her whip and her arts to to support Volio from long range as for Volio the the kid that this kid is literally a fast and tough target to take on but even so he's try he's doing his best to make sure not to deal tons of d powerful damage by using his martial arts, he's able to get the upper hand somewhat. But it's becoming one of a tough battle before he, before he begins using his art, his drive art. As he, scre as he screams out, wild drive! As then a aura that surrounds him as the... As then a spiritual lion soon wraps around Volio's body. As then, he soon releases a powerful roar that sounds like that of an actual lion. But soon, spiderweb cracks begin to fall under, under Volio. As then, he puts his sword in front of him. On, as he channels his magical martial art. Saying, magical martial art. Lion's how? 
as then he swings down a pure burst of energy made from wind as it takes the form of a giant lion's head as it's sent flying right at the little boy as then he soon knocked into the wall before as that attack as he soon stuck into the wall for a bit trying his best to get out screaming and screaming trying to get loose as then his he the his slaughter drive soon deactivates from over exalt use of map of mp with next up as it being dorgan and edward as the other one ha also is also trying her best to slaughter our two half breeds with edward with Edward trying his best to use his fist to block each and every one of the other strikes and attacks. Uh, however, he keeps getting, he, every time he tries to deal an attack, it's too, she's way too fast and, di and disappears. As for, Do as for Dorgan, he's, well, you can guess it. He's not really fighting one bit as he's been using his song arts to support Edward from given that he, he doesn't hurt women no matter what, no matter their age after all. With then, Edward saying, hey, Dorgan, I know you don't like to hurt Kit. No, you don't like to hurt women, but seriously, this is the one chance where you need to let go of that creed. Saying, I know, I know. That's why I'm waiting for the perfect chance to strike. With Edward saying, wait, what? With soon, He's saying, just continue what you're doing and I'll support you as I can. And I'll defend myself, of course. As he plays one more song art, increasing, Ed increasing Edward's speed and attack power. With soon dodging a, s dodging a slash from the dark elf girl. While he's still ducking, he uses one of his martial arts being that of somersault kick. As he soon... Jump, jumps into the air, spinning while trying to kick the girl. She dodges before he uses another martial art, saying, Power Pulse! And sends multiple barrages of Power Pulse blasts right at the little girl. She dodging each and every single one. As for Dorgan, he soon sees that opening as he begins to smirk and says, Rhythm Drive! As then... It's soon, li musical lyrics begin to flow all across Dorgan's body in that of a circle and almost like that of a musical halo. With then, he soon rushes at the little girl and with then screaming out, Magical martial art, Twister Dance! With soon, he begins spinning and spinning around as he turns into that of a living Wendy Twister. With tons with, with so many winds flowing all across him, as the little girl tries her best to block the attack, as she's continued being sent flying by the by the spinning, piercing winds of Dorian's axe and wind magic. Where soon he soon screams out, "Martial art, armor crush!" As then he brings down his axe. Lay, swinging it down so hard, it creates that of a powerful shockwave, even a massive crater in the arena, with soon sending her flying into the wall as well. But in, instead of it killing her, it, it actually knocks her out. With then the slaughter drive soon timing out from lack of magical power. With next up being Izuku, and Ymir, with the two trying their best to overcome the, the Prime Inquisitor as he sends dagger after dagger after dagger at them, with, with many of the daggers having that of ninja wire wrapped around the, wrapped around the bottom hilt of the blade, of, the, of its blades, as he begins swinging them around, using them that as, chain, like that, as that of the Kasari Gamas, but and then wrapping them and trying to wrap them around while, tr while using the blades to cut through their skin. With both Izuku 
and Ymir feeling kind of somewhat overwhelmed by the overwhelming, well, speed and brutality of the young boy, as he didn't show this before when, when they first fought him. But then, Izuku saying, this is insane. No matter how much I try, I can't get, get any closer to him. With then Ymir saying, I'll give you an open, I'll give you at least another chance of an opening, Izuku. Make it count. Saying, all right, Ymir. As he prepares his spear once again, as he rushes at the, the Inquisitor, but soon him throwing his knives once again, tossing them with them being engulfed in that of darkness as it being that of a magical martial art. With Ymir, she prepares that of a magic art as she's saying magic art, Phoenix flower dance. As then tons of fireballs in the form of that of, of, of flower petals begin sending at the at the daggers as each as the as each fireball soon deflected each dagger with the inquisitor actually having that of white eyes while his while they're still red as for izuku his speed is increased as then he activates his martial art martial arts jet rush as he soon goes into a blinding flash as he pierces right to the Inquisitor, as then blood, as he scratches the, his side, with then the Inquisitor sees Izuku, as Izuku realizing now's the perfect chance. Mar Radiant Drive, light! As soon, light, light energy begins to radiate all across Izuku's bo body, with then the Inquisitor rushes right at Izuku in a blinding rage, wanting to kill him more than anything. However, Izuku sees this coming as he prepares, I'm going to end this right here and now. Before he begins to change, his mindset begins to change as he rushes at the, rushes at the Inquisitor. He soon lands on his right side, knocking him back. Then he sends, he gets in front of him, knocking him upwards. Then he knocks him to the side again in the air and over and over and over, all over the place. With then saying, I'll pierce right through evil itself and strike down to the heavens. Plus ultra art, grand pierce. With soon a light up. Uh, powerful energy like pierce spear like pierce begins going right through the inquisitor's body with everybody looking at the inquisitor with shocking eyes as people believe that he has died with soon the inquis soon the slaughter drive begins going out with long side due to his magic disappearing but soon the inquisitor drops down to the ground with Izuku catching the young boy with then Iz with everybody thinking, Izuku, did you? No, he's alive. My spear plus ultra art doesn't kill. It's it, it knocks out. It knocks them out to the point that their magic levels reset all the way down to zero. So he's just going to need to... Z He's just going to need to sleep, at least for now. Within, Edward saying, <laughs> I thought you were about to be a hypocrite and say that you weren't going to save him. With Izuku saying, come on, Edward, you know me better than that. I'll save everybody that I can, no matter what. With then, Ymir wrap, wrapping her arm across Izuku. If Izuku does blushing, they're saying, I know you will. After all, you're our hero. With her having that of a comforting smile, even towards Izuku. With this, everybody, all of the all of the liberators begin to cheer. With soon, all the other liberators that were able to get, able to go through the underground slave market, freeing all of the slaves and even taking down all of the guards as well. 
and they were fine. The day has finally come to an end and the empire's slave system has finally been demolished. As for the emperor and Marshall, they're continuing their duel with Marshall doing a flurry of, of pierces using his rapier. As for the emperor, he does tons of, he does tons of counter slashes using his own rapier as well. However, it shows that there's already a clear winner as it being Marshall. With then the emperor saying, you damn brat, I gave you everything. I tried to make this country yours and give you the place that you need to rule. With saying, by making it in a country that everybody despises and hates, why do you believe that Elysium has ar has kept its borders closed from all the time? Why do you think the Pope of Crystallis prefers talking to you in that of without a communication magic instead of in person like they used to? Not only that, the new country of Notsuda, they are already aware on how corrupt and twisted our country is. They're already aware if they made contact with, uh, with us, they'll turn their people into that of slaves as well. They're lucky that their country is on the is on the southern edge of Crystallis. Because if we because if we attack them, we would be done for. Knowing on how powerful their country is. With then at the Emperor saying, and you and you doing it because of all of this? Because you want the world to to have respect for us? No! Tell the countries of Teltius need to fear us! You are supposed to be that emperor that makes everybody fear. Say, I don't want that. All I want is cooperation. But you took that away from everyone here. You made everybody despise the empire. And most of all, the most unforgivable thing, you killed the woman I love. After saying this, he pierces his sword right through his father's heart. With that, the Emperor say, the woman you love, you talking about that damn demonic human. After saying that, soon the Emperor dies right then and there. As, he as Marshall retracts his rapier, he soon says, I am now the Emperor of, of Vulcus. I will now end the slave system right here and now. Any noble that goes against my order is considered an enemy of the state. And don't even try to flee to that of Crystallis or even that of Gallio. Gallio is still, still forbids any nobles from coming into the country, even commoners. And don't even think about heading to Crystallis. The country never allows anyone of previous nobility titles from another country maintain them. Not once. They had to earn their titles of nobility back. With that, all of the nobles began having that of fear, panic, and scared. However, the nobles who were already sided with Prince Marshall from the very beginning have nothing to worry about and will continue to serve the, em the empire for a better and free nation. But then, Izuki saying, huh, he did it for the woman he loved. Not only was it, it, with then Sophia saying, he told me about her, at least once when he was at his lowest, actually. She was a demonic woman servant working at the palace who had no name and was literally a servant. She was a frail girl. Sweet, he said. They fell, and he fell for her at first sight. He didn't care that she was a demonic human. All he cared about was just being with her. With her, he was literally happy. But that happiness faded once the emperor found out. With then, Edward saying, he, he didn't. Did he? Say, with Ymir saying, please tell me that he just sent her away. That he basically sent her to a noble that actually killed her by accident. With then, so Sophia basically nodding her head sideways. 
confirming that it's not the truth. That the emperor basically, basically took her, told the guards to take her away and kill her. But after they had her fun, they had their fun with her. After hearing that, Izuku and the others were disgusted at such a thing that it made Izuku even more angry that a man like that ruled over his country and didn't even care about his own son's happiness and cared more about that of his status and title. But then, as for the prime minister, he tried to escape by taking the emperor's rapier and pointing it at his own daughter, saying, Alexandra, you let me go right here now, young lady. I swear if you don't, saying, of course, I'll let you go, father. I just wanted you to make sure you didn't get involved in the duel or get anyone else to get involved in the duel. With then the prime, prime minister couldn't help but be happy with then soon a gut Basically, a group of slaves began going up to the prime minister, saying, Besides, these slaves want to kill you other than me. Saying, You wouldn't. Oh, I would. You were lining your pockets just as much as the emperor was. So, you'll get what you deserve as well. Being torn to shreds by the very people that you saw as that of lower beneath you. With then... As then, all the slaves had multiple weapons in their hands. With then, one of them grabbing the prime minister's cloak, saying, no, no, please, someone save me! Someone save me! As all you could hear was that of one man screams for mercy and another group's screams of satisfaction. With that, Everything finally came to an end with Izuku soon leaving the underground market. After leaving, news began to spread like wildfire as everybody now knows that the Emperor has been killed and dethroned by, Pr by Prince Marshall. As many people would want to rebel and soon, Izu however, re soon releasing the law that the slavery system has now been abolished from the empire. And even to tell everybody this as well, that all people who were once slaves will now be returned back to their countries. However, anyone, however, those who were forced into slavery due to debts will have to work off their debts by working as that of, ser as that of civil servants and will be given their and be given full pardon as well. Anyone who was forced into slavery by debt due to nobles inter interfering or ruining a person's life will be, will be given a second chance in life as that of a commoner and a full-fledged citizen once more. After that, many social reforms began to build once up in the empire. With the help of Izuku and the party, things were starting to get a little bit better. However, as for Izuku, he couldn't help but feel somewhat down as he's in the palace in the guest room, looking down at the entire city. Within, Edward soon coming in, checking up on his best friend, saying, Yo, Izuku, how you doing? Saying, Do I look like I'm doing good? Saying, I know you better than that. So, no, there's something on your mind. Within, Izuku, basically looking up, this guy saying, I have taken so much for granted with, with Edward looking at Izuku, saying, what do you mean? You've never, at back in my world, I always hated the fact that I was quirkless. I hated the fact that I was weak, that I didn't have power. I thought inequality never exist, was bad in my world. It's worse here way worse it, it, when an entire race is treated like that of trash at least there's some well racists that actually try to get to understand one another 
The only difference is that quirkless people are looked down upon and seen as that of, well, disgusting and that of weak and tragic creatures like myself. So with Ben Edwards saying, hey, don't say that about yourself, man. You're really strong. You have a strong will. Yeah, I do. But still, if I knew this, if I knew that this world was so much worse than mine, I wouldn't have complained so much. I wouldn't have made my mom worry so much. I would have just, you would have just laid down and let people treat you the way that they did back then. Huh? Within Hizuku looking at his blonde half elf best friend saying, you would have you would allowed people to basically do whatever the hell you want with with you. You base you would have just let people roll all over you and allow them to do whatever the hell they want instead of you fighting back and standing up for what you want. That's not the Izuku I know. That's 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 an imposter I would know. Soon. Izuku Edward saying Edward would soon Izuku couldn't help but clenched his fists on, gra grip his hands across the balcony as he soon screams out, screw this bullshit world, screw it all. With then, Edward was really taken back saying, Izuku, you just said bullshit. You never say bullshit. The only curse words you say is that of damn hell and and bastard, you never say anything other than those three. Wow, you must be really pissed. Saying, I am pissed. I'm pissed that so much twistedness is in this world. So much heartbreak and suffering. I'm tired of seeing it. And this is what it takes to be a hero. I had to keep on trying to end stuff like this. It's harder than it is. It's breaking my heart. <sighs> So much corruption, and I'm seeing it at first. And the worst part, it comes from people whose jobs are supposed to protect the people. Instead, they only care more about themselves instead of others. It truly, it truly pisses me off more than anything. With that, Edward saying, I get it, man. I totally do. But hey, you're not alone. We all hate stuff like this as well. And, we're, and you're not, and you don't have to bear it all by yourself. After saying this, Edward wraps his arm around Izuku's shoulders, saying, because we're all here for you, buddy. Me, Ymir, Vol Teach Volio, Dorgan, and I'm pretty sure Sophia is gonna be staying with us anytime soon, since you've already decided, am I right? With Izuku saying, it's still up to her if she wants to stay with us or not. See, I'm pretty sure she's gonna stay. I can tell she already, she likes you kind of quite a bit. Just like Ymir with Izuku saying, come on, stop teasing me, man. Saying, I wish I was, but I'm telling you the truth. Those girls are obsessed with you. With it saying, well, whatever. Like I said, catch you later. Try and remember. We're always here by your side, buddy. As he says this, he soon leaves Izuku's room. Then Izuku couldn't help but shed a couple of tears, saying, I'm so blessed. I'm truly blessed to have great friends like Ed. After this, more, more of re restructuring began to build. However, Izuku has not seen one person that he wanted to check on as it being the former inquisitor however as for the two the two in future inquisitors as the boy's name is shen and the girl's name is sho with that as they have no idea on where their predecessor has went to hearing this izuku feels somewhat down but he also feels happy hoping that the former inquisitor is happy with that, two years have gone by with literal year as the years I was trying to spend rebuilding the empire, keep trying to keep the corruption and pain away from all the people, 
trying to give proper lives to all of the former slaves and sending all and sending some of them all back to their countries even the ones who were demonic humans in the demon lord territory back to their countries as well it was rough it was tough but it all paid off in the end with now izuku is a lot older and a lot more mature as he now even has a new attire alongside everyone else in his party as well which i'll explain next time uh, however izuku and the team are about to leave within yep Marshall saying, it's, I'm glad that you could help us, Lord Sir Hero Izuku. <laughs> with Izuku saying, Come on, Marshall. We've been, I've been with you for two years. I'm pretty sure we're already friends. Saying, <laughs> Yes, you're right. Thank you, Izuku. And the rest of you as well. With everybody soon waving and smiling in appreciation. But then looking at Sophia. Sophia? Thank you for everything. You sure you want to stay with the hero? With then Sophia saying, I'm positive. I've grown to love little Midori after all. Saying, can you please stop Soph? With it saying, and I put insides. I want to do more good. If I stay with Izuku and the others, I should be able to help more. Besides, my dream has finally come to fruition. I put an end to that accursed system. But I will, but I swear, I will find the Duchess and I will make her pay. After hearing this, soon Dorgan saying, I still can't believe the Duchess was able to escape. Where the hell would she go though? There's nowhere else that would have her. With then, Ymir saying, don't worry, we will find her. She can't hide for long. With then, Marshall saying, well, me, me and Alexandra will be looking for will be looking for any other mar any other nobles who have been hiding in the shadows. Most likely, many of who did leave will be trying to plant another attack. So we will pre be prepared. Fizik saying, "If you guys ever need any help, you know you know what where to find us. I know. Your next your next task is to head to Elysium. Am I right?" Saying, yeah, that's where we're going next. With Marshall saying, I wish for safe travels for you, my friends. With then, after saying this, Izuku wishes the best for Marshall and the Empire as well. As they begin to leave, they soon see a familiar figure. One that's a lot more older, actually. As it being the same Dark Elf Inquisitor. With then Izuk saying, so, finally came. Saying, sorry, I, I had some time, I had to think for myself to realize what I wanted. After all, I was raised to be a killer. With then Izuk saying, so, what have you decided? Stay here in the empire and probably help out Marshall and the, and the others? Saying, no, I want to be away from this country. I want to stay away from its people. Even though the bat even though the Emperor is gone, i it's caused too much pain to me. I don't want to be anywhere near here anymore. What's saying? I see. So, what have you decided? It's saying All I know is what I do is to serve. It's all I can do. It's all I know. So I think I've decided. I will choose who I serve. I will choose who I follow. And the person I choose to follow is you, Sir Hiro Izuku Midoriya. After hearing this, everybody was really taken back by this, saying, huh, Wait, you choose to serve me? But I. It's up to you. I will choose to serve you. Wherever you go, I will follow. Wherever you decide of me, I will do. If you wish for me to leave, I will leave as you wish. With then, Volio saying, <laughs> take the kid with you. I don't think he's gonna be going anytime soon. But then Dorgan soon playing his lute saying, I, I absolutely agree. After all, if you don't, 
he, there might be a chance he'll be following us over and over again. And I think that'll be more annoying than him, than him not tagging along. After saying this, the Inquisitor, the former Inquisitor, looks at Izuku as he still kneels to him, saying, Oh, why the hell not? Why don't you join us? Uh, sorry, what's your name? Saying, I don't have one. After all, I've forgotten my original name. So, all I know is that it's originally from Notsuda. Saying, Notsuda. Hmm. With that, Izuku soon saying, Okay then, how about I give you a new name? From now on, your name is Kai. With hearing this, he raises his head saying, Kai, that is my new name. Izuku saying, yep, that's your name. Welcome aboard, Kai. After saying this, he soon sends him a party invitation. With Kai was shocked, but then accepts. But then feeling a, fl a surge of power before soon standing back up saying, I vow to protect you. Master Izuku, with my life, with Izuku saying, no, do not give up your life. From now on, you are our equal. You are our friend and our comrade. From now on, you can be you, however you see fit. With then, Kai couldn't help but say, thank you, my master. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And oh God, I can't believe that this took so goddamn long. Ugh, I am so sorry, everyone. But honestly, I just wanted to end this arc off on a bang, to be honest. So next up, we're going to the country of Elysio. And that one's gonna be quite crazy as well. So be prepared. But I'm gonna take a little break from the story and work on another fanfic story. One that you guys voted for. So yeah. Also, check out my Discord gaming channel and my and my main channel, Patreon as well. All of them would be in the description below. So with all that said, this is Leo Mookie signing out. Later guys, and have a good day.